Hey guys, and welcome to a rather special video today. I've been very kindly approached by Matthew Doe at Toy Box Treasures to give you the inside info on their latest Doctor Who prop acquisition. And here it is, an original Ice Warrior helmet as used in the very first Ice Warrior serial in 1967 with Patrick Troughton. It's amazing that something as old as this costume piece has survived over the last 50 years, and it's fantastic to think that we still have a part of one of Doctor Who's most iconic monsters from its original appearance. What makes this particular helmet all the more special is the fact that this was one of the two larger Ice Warrior heads that were first produced for the Ice Warriors, often seen in the back of shots and flanking the lead Ice Warrior, Varga, as played by Bernard Breslau. These larger heads also made an appearance alongside John Pertwee in the Monster of Peladon, on, where it had been refurbished with a new paint job and new red eye lenses. The head also had another famous appearance in a Radio Times photo shoot at the start of John Pertwee's tenure as the Doctor. And thanks to the careful eyes of the team at Toy Box Treasures, they've been able to match the scales on this unearthed prop to the costume used in that very same Radio Times photo shoot. Unfortunately, as you can see from the photos, the head was in a pretty bad condition, with the latex falling off at the slightest touch. The chin piece had also seen better days, and the head had unfortunately been altered previously when it had been placed in an exhibition in the 1980s. The familiar red lenses that had been added when the costume was used for the Monster of Peladon had been painted silver, and the prop had been given a different coat of green paint. With so much of the original latex work missing, it was decided that it was better to preserve the prop rather than reconstructing it. The preservation task fell to Doctor Who alumni Mike Tucker and his team at the model unit. Mike is of course best known not only for his amazing model work on both classic and modern Doctor Who, but also Red Dwarf, and of course being part of the Doctor Who Experience's own restoration projects, having fixed up a variety of classic Doctor Who monsters. Mike was able to remove the silver paint from the lenses, restoring it to its appearance in the Monster of Peladon, and he also found traces of the original green lenses as featured in the Radio Times photo shoot. The strap portion around the chin was badly damaged, and so this was repaired using pieces of the original latex to ensure that the construction remained 100% original. Finally, the paint was matched to cover up the gaps. As you can see from the pictures, the Ice Warrior is several shades of green, a darker shade is used in the Monster of Peladon, and a lighter shade that was applied by the exhibitors in the 1980s. Although no longer a part of the costume, the helmet even had the name of one of the actors written in permanent marker on the inside, and having done a bit of digging myself, this would have been the helmet worn by Terence Denville during the recording of the Monster of Peladon. And as an additional exclusive, here's a look at how the head would look now with the original green lenses, which Mike Tucker mocked up specially for this photo. So why were there two much larger headed Ice Warriors? It's been suggested that the larger heads were in fact the original designs from costume designer Martin Bao, faithfully following the direction offered by Brian Hells in his script. However, this was then changed during recording in the studio when director Derek Martinus requested that the lead Ice Warriors have smaller fitting heads that we now traditionally associate with the Ice Warriors. In the script, it was suggested that the helmet should be hood-like and reminiscent of a Saxon helmet, which is evident in the large dome shape of the head. The original unaltered head gets a few on-screen appearances in all of the parts of the story shot on film. So the Ice Warrior who chases Victoria around the tunnels in episode three, and Varga who is unearthed at the beginning of episode one, and when he breaks out of the ice at the end of the same episode. You can see here that there's no strap piece around the chin. Instead, the chin is loose and long locks of hair flow down the sides, again, keeping to the original Saxon and Viking style description of the script. However, by episode two, Varga had a new tight fitting helmet and it's possible that the original large head was altered to better match the new prop. So there you go, guys, an incredible piece of Doctor Who history unearthed. Thank you very much to Matthew Doe at Toy Box Treasures for getting in touch with me so I could be part of the official press release and do go and check out their website. There's a link in the description below for the full article and more pictures and information on how they retrieved the prop and how Mike Tucker and his team preserved it. Thank you very much for watching guys and I hope to see you all again very soon.